Junji Ito is one of the most prolific horror manga artists of all time. Getting a start in 1987, Ito has become a pillar in the manga industry, with such iconic stories like Uzumaki, Goyo, and Tomoe. Unfortunately, there has yet to be any good animated adaptations of Ito's work. Fingers crossed the Adult Swim Uzumaki is going to be good. I mean, it's only been in development for like 28 fucking years, so I would hope it's at least halfway decent. I am a gigantic fan of Junji Ito. His surreal and grotesque imagery mixed with his Lovecraftian style of storytelling makes for an experience that's unlike anything else in manga today. So I thought it'd be fun if I gave a quick rundown of some of my favorite Junji Ito stories. I'm going to summarize the stories themselves and then I'll talk about what makes them incredible to me. Now of course Junji Ito has such a large library of work, we could be sitting here all day talking about them. And as this channel grows, I eventually do want to talk a lot more about Junji Ito. But that's for the future, and this is now, so right now, let's talk about my favorite Junji Ito short stories. Starting at number one with Master Umez and Me. Master Umez and Me is not a fictional story, but instead a fantastical retelling of Ito's adolescence discovering the work of Kazuya Umez. Umez is an icon of the manga industry in his own right. Some of Umez's expansive work includes The Drifting Classroom, Cat-Eyed Boy, and Orochi. Actually, a, a bit of a fun fact, my first original video on this channel was supposed to be about Orochi, but I was so new at recording audio that my mic was picking up my computer fan, so all the audio just was completely shot. So don't be surprised if one day I do make a video talking about Orochi, because I really do love that manga. To call Master Umez and me a love letter would be an understatement. Ito pretty much attributes his entire career to Umez. As a child, Ito would read everything Umez wrote. I'm not an artist, but I do love studying artists. And one of my favorite things to read about is where artists get their inspiration from. And that's one of the aspects that I really love about this story. It's safe to say that if it wasn't for Kazuya Umez, we may not have gotten some of the great manga artists of today, including Ito. I also really love it when Junji Ito draws himself in his stories, which he actually does fairly often. You can tell that he has a really self-deprecating sense of humor, which I really like to see. The next story on my list is the Enigma of Emigari Fault. After an earthquake, a fault is discovered in the Emigari Mountain. The fault gets the attention of the media when thousands of human-shaped holes are found on the side of the mountain. As more people come to the fault, scientists have trouble explaining the origins of these strange holes. Some of the people at the fault start to feel a strange compulsion to enter into the human-shaped holes, as if the holes are calling to them, as if the holes were made for them. Once you enter your hole, however, there's no turning back. Once in the hole, you can only go farther into the mountain. One night at the base of the fault, one of the main characters, Awaki, has a strange dream that he's in ancient times and he's made to walk into a hole carved from his outline as a punishment for his crimes. The holes are carved in a way that once inside, you can't walk back, you can only move forward. The holes are a kind of ancestral birthright for those who are called by them. The Enigma of Emigari Fault is one of Ito's most popular stories, and for good reason. The writing and mystery in this one are exceptionally well done. To me, the holes represent man's compulsion. Even when facing death, we can't stop but to walk in. And the last image of this story is really haunting as well. The next story on my list is The Hanging Balloons. If you were to ask a number of accomplished authors to write a story about giant human head balloons that swoop down to choke their human counterpart to death, most of those writers would throw their hands in the air and wouldn't even try. That's something I love about Junji Ito. Nothing is too weird or too far-fetched for him to write about. After the untimely of a famous pop star, some people start claiming to see a giant version of a pop star's head floating around. After news of this strange phenomenon starts spreading around the country, thousands of more balloons suddenly appear. Every person has their own balloon. If they're caught outside, their balloon will come down and get them. The survivors eventually learn that Whatever damage is done to the balloon will happen to their human counterpart as well. The Hanging Balloons feels like a fever dream. In fact, a lot of Ito stories can be described like that. There was actually a follow-up to this story, but it didn't really add all that much to be honest. The original was perfect the way it was. There really was no reason to bring anything more into it. Next up on the list is Earthbound. 
People start to stand in place like statues in seemingly random locations. If they're moved, they will eventually just go back to the spot. They are eventually called the Earthbound, and with each passing day, more and more people join this so-called Earthbound. The Earthbound eventually freeze like statues and begin to shatter as if they're made of stone. The short story follows a young girl named Asano. Asano is fascinated by the Earthbound. She travels around, leaving food for them, even though they can't eat or drink. They can only stand there. At first, scientists believe that the Earthbound is some kind of disease or virus. Asano doesn't believe this, however. She believes it's not a physical ailment, but a psychological one. We eventually learn that the Earthbound are confined to locations where they once felt great guilt. One night, while at home, Asano finds her boss standing in the middle of her apartment. We learn that years prior, Asano was assaulted by a masked man in that very apartment. That masked man was her boss. Earthbound is very different to me than other Junji Ito stories. In fact, it really doesn't even read like a Junji Ito story to me. Ito's stories are usually more fantastical and explore very abstract ideas. Earthbound, for a lack of a better term, is a very grounded story for Ito. I think the motif of guilt in the form of the Earthbound is really well done. This might not be as flashy or as grotesque as other Ito stories, but just for the psychological factor alone, it is one of the best. Earthbound is so thought-provoking. This is the kind of story that stays with you and have you thinking for a long time after you read it. The last story we're gonna talk about today and what I consider to be the greatest short story Junji Ito has ever written is The Long Dream. What can I say that already hasn't been said about The Long Dream? The Long Dream is considered by many to be one of Ito's greatest and most horrifying stories. Premise-wise, The Long Dream is incredible. A girl named Mami is staying in a hospital waiting for brain surgery. One night in the hospital, Death visits Mami. She believes she's going to die soon. Mami tells the doctor of her visitor. It turns out, Mami was not visited by Death, but by a deformed patient named Tetsuro. Tetsuro is plagued by horrible and vivid nightmares that, for Tetsuro, last for what seems like years. With every passing day, Tetsuro's nightmares get longer. Although for everyone else, Tetsuro is only sleeping for a night. Tetsuro's body begins to deteriorate from the stress of the nightmares. Junji Ito is a master of body horror, and The Living Dream is some of Ito's best work in the subgenre. We see the slow decline of Tetsuro's body, until at the end, when he barely resembles a human anymore. This premise is so incredible that I almost wish this was longer than just a short story. I feel like there's so many possibilities here. I personally suffer from sleep paralysis, so the idea of a nightmare that seems to last forever is horrifying to me. For all the reasons I just mentioned, The Long Dream is my favorite Junji Ito short story. Like I said earlier, this could be a five hour video if I wanted because there's just so many great Junji Ito stories. I love Junji Ito, he's my favorite author, he's my favorite artist. I just, I, I love all of his work, and I can guarantee you that this is not the last time you're going to be hearing his name on my channel. This video is a lot shorter than my last one, but I just wanted to put something out while I'm still working on the Crow video, so we don't go a whole month without an upload. That wouldn't be fair to you guys. I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but seriously, again, thank you guys. I'm just blown away by the responses I've gotten so far. I, I'm blown away. That's all I can say. That's it for now. Thank you guys, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.